Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and it's finally here, Unity's official multiplayer networking solution is finally fully released. Netcode for Game Objects has been in development for a long time, it's been in 1.0 preview for several months, and now it's finally out of preview. Along with that, there's also some exciting news regarding multiplayer, which is dedicated servers, as well as matchmaking, and there's also a bunch of new awesome samples. So in this video, let's go through the news and see everything that just came out. And I'm also currently working on a really in-depth step-by-step tutorial to get started with multiplayer, so stay tuned for that tutorial next week. Okay, so multiplayer, it's finally here. The official name is Netcode for Game Objects. This is now Unity's official networking solution. It actually used to be called the ML API before Unity bought them a few years ago. So even though this is a new release, this has already been in development for a real long time, so it's already an extremely stable netcode stack. In fact, they actually spent the last 8 months just fixing up this 1.0 release, just making sure that everything was perfect before fully releasing to everyone. And now that time has finally come, so you can go ahead into the Unity netcode page to check out all of the documentation. This is a mid-level networking library. It is designed to give you a nice level of abstraction so you don't have to worry about things like packets, sockets, connections, and whatnot. You just focus on actually building your multiplayer game. It easily lets you keep your game simulation synchronized with support for scene management, animations, physics, and several tools to diagnose problems. Netcode for game objects is primarily designed to support relatively small-scale co-op games, so think games along the lines of Overcooked, Among Us, Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, and so on. It supports all of the latest LTS versions, so version 2020, 2021, and it works on all platforms, so mobile, PC, consoles, XR, and so on. The only exception is WebGL, since there's apparently some issues with accessing IP sockets, but there's also a workaround if you absolutely need WebGL. Along with Netcode for Game Objects is Unity Transport, which is the default underlying transport layer. This is what actually manages the UDP connections to send and receive packets. So technically you could just use this, you could just use the transport layer to handle some non-game connections yourself. This is a really interesting topic that I very much would like to research. Just making some non-game-like applications with Unity and handling some multiplayer connections, that should be interesting. Or alternatively, you can also use whatever transport layer you want. Really this whole thing, netcode for game objects, all of the UGS tools and so on, all of it is built in a really nice modular way, so you can mix and match and use whatever tools you want, it's really awesome. If you can't wait for my video next week to get started, then go ahead and check out the official docs, they are super detailed, really easy to use. So if you want, go ahead and start learning for yourself. Along with the docs, another excellent learning tool are the awesome samples. These are complete, fully featured games where you can download and inspect all of the source code to see how they all work. There are two new samples that just came out and a massive update. So they are a massive Battle Royale game sample, a 2D multiplayer sample, and a 3D co-op game. The update is for the boss room sample, which is the 3D co-op game. Again, they've also been working on this sample for a real long time. They're essentially dogfooding their own networking stack by testing it with this game. It's a co-op game with up to four players, so you have multiple characters in a nice dungeon setting. A bunch of enemy goblins are spawned, and it's up to you and your friends to defeat them, and the game also includes a pretty nice boss fight. Again, the main purpose of this is as an educational tool, so all of the source code is available. So if you want to know, for example, how the boss fight works in multiplayer, you can go ahead and check the code. If you want to learn how they spawn the goblins, again, go ahead and check the code. This sample also shows you how to use Lobby and Relay to handle your multiplayer connections. I've been using this sample myself to learn netcode for game objects and it's been really useful. I might do a dedicated video just doing a deep dive on this project, it really is quite interesting. But that project has also been around for quite some time, so if you're looking for something completely new, you have the new Galactic Kitten sample. This one is a 2D multiplayer game. Again, it's using netcode for game objects and this project is actually quite a bit simpler, which is great for learning. So again, you can just download the entire project and check out all the source code. And being in 2D, this one is an excellent reference if you want to learn how to synchronize sprite animations to the movement and so on. Finally, there's another brand new 3D really awesome sample called BR200. This one is a fully working 200 player battle royale game sample, really massive. Now, like I mentioned, netcode for game objects is primarily meant for small scale games, so this one is not using it. Instead, it's using Photon Fusion for the networking, but also makes use of Multiplay for the dedicated servers and matchmaker. So again, another great example of how you can use all of the various modular tools in unique ways. This game is really fast-paced, you have several modes, deathmatch, elimination, and battle royale. It showcases the use of multiple weapon systems, there's projectile weapons, hitscan, and throwables. 
Of course, it features a shrinking area like any Battle Royale. There are moving platforms, item boxes. There's also recoil patterns and recoil compensation, and it even has a jetpack. Again, all of this, all of these features were all working in multiplayer in a fast-paced game. And again, it's a completely free downloadable project, so you can download it to see how all of this works. And netcode for game objects also easily integrates with all of the various Unity Gaming Services tools. If you don't know about UGS, you can go watch my video on it. There's tons of tools, about 30 of them. All of them do really useful things that can really help you out. So again, go watch that video for a quick overview of all of those tools. The important ones related to netcode is Relay and Lobby. Lobby is how you can create public and private lobbies for your players to find each other. And Relay is how you can connect your players together without having to worry about things like firewalls or net punch through. I'm going to cover both of them and how to use them with netcode for game objects in the full tutorial next week. The news today is that Multiplay and Matchmaker, two of the UGS tools, they now have self-serve options. Meaning that previously you had to manually contact Unity if you wanted to use those tools, but now you can just sign up and start using them. Multiplay is a dedicated server, it's how you can run your dedicated servers on the cloud or anywhere else. For example, it's what Apex Legends uses. So based on that, if it can handle a massive game like Apex, it can certainly handle your game. And Matchmaker is, like the name implies, all about matchmaking. So you give it a bunch of parameters, a bunch of players, and matches players with one another. Also related to it is Vivox, which also has self-serve. This is a voice and text communication tool, so it allows you to chat with your players or speak with voice between them. And again, this one is also a tool that Apex Legends uses. And finally, also related to multiplayer is the netcode for entities, or the DOTS ECS netcode. As you might know, entities or ECS is currently in development, and there's also a netcode stack for handling just those entities. But just like with ECS itself, this one is still an experimental. The entities package is scheduled to come out of preview by early next year. The main goal with this netcode stack is that this one is being designed to handle massive games with a very large number of networked objects. Alright, so the wait is finally over, netcode for game objects is here, it's fully released and ready for you to use. So if you've ever wanted to make a nice multiplayer game, then now is the time. For me, I haven't done anything in multiplayer in many years, so I'm definitely looking forward to this. Like I said, I'm currently working on a really detailed step-by-step -step tutorial, so stay tuned for that video next week. And after that video, I have also got tons of multiplayer ideas that I'd love to explore, so let me know in the comments what sort of multiplayer topics you'd like to see me cover. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.